2861. Good evening to all the viewers who are watching live and will be watching on the recorded version. Uh, there are a few things to talk about before starting this. Uh, we failed to upload the uh, upload um, audio file, means the audio highlight of uh, previous CMEs. And for details, we will talk about that at the end of the CME. So we have wasted two, uh, seven minutes and we do not want to, want to waste any more time. So let's just start with the 30 seconds countdown time. Good evening, sir. Good evening. And very good evening. And good evening. Good evening to all the viewers across the globe. It's a very happy Choti Diwali and our pranam, love, and respect to all our juniors, seniors, elders, and our beloved brothers and sisters. Starting a few years back, we, National Store of Homeopathic Alumni Association, had come up to the 59th live online CME tonight. And tonight we have some very exciting speakers, a lot of things to learn in this continued medical education program. With us, we have our beloved president of Alumni Association NIH, Dr. Dev Narayan Kalyani, sir. With your permission, sir, uh, can we start tonight's program? Sure, sure, please. Thank you, sir. And we have our inaugurator, the learned person from NIH. And he's a very uh, popular as well as very loving uh, gentleman, our beloved Professor Dr. Ajay Kumar Chaudhary. <coughs> Sir has been, uh, he is a ex Calcutta Medical College uh, star as well as he had done DTMH from School of Tropical Medicine in 1990 and MD in 1994. Sir joined us as a guest lecturer at the vague end of our student's career, that's in 1994. We were then the interns. And now he is the HOD and full-time uh, professor in physiology since 1997 in charge of cardiology, and now Professor S.A.G. I request our backstage editor, Orko Mukherjee, to bring upon Professor Dr. Ajay Kumar Chaudhary, sir. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Vidyut. Thank you, Kalanida, for inviting me to inaugurate this session. I find it really, I'm really fortunate to be considered as an inaugurator for this session of yours. I wish you all well, the very best. Uh, congratulations on the 59th edition of your uh, alumni get together. And uh, today we'll be having discussions by Dr. Pradeep Bairi, who is a HOD of Reparative Department in Mahesh Bhattacharji. He'll be talking about interpretation and practical applications of mental rubrics. And that will be followed by uh, a presentation by Dr. Satid Naskar, who is lecturer in Organon DND Homeopathic Medical College. And he'll be talking about homeopathy in difficult and incurable diseases. And the whole session will be moderated by our very favorite Dr. Umpriya Mishra, who's HOD gynae in NIH. And uh, our gynae department is like overcrowded every day. The number of people, the number of patients, we are really happy to see our gynae department doing wonderfully well. One of the best departments in the OPD. Really, congratulations to Ompriya, ma'am. I would like her to hand over the mic to her to moderate this session. All the best to all. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. 
Thanks a lot for your encouraging words. It's all your blessings that uh, we all are doing something for the betterment of patients and uh, for the upliftment of homeopathy. With a good evening to all my uh, viewers present over here. Uh, first, I would like to say namaskar to Dr. Kalyan sir and namaskar to Viduddha. And again, definitely namaskar to Ajay Chaudhary sir and uh, our most respected and beloved Dr. Pradeep Bairi, who is very close to my heart. Actually, in the year 2000, when I came in NIH for the first time, he belonged to the first batch. And this batch, each and every one, they gave us, particularly me as an outsider. I never felt that I'm an outsider. Uh, I got so much love, affection, and care from all these people. And Pradeep Bairi, I was the first person uh, here in Kolkata. Uh, actually, he, I visited his house for the first time. And uh, I had a very feast on a person of uh, his daughter. So till that, that is very memorable for me. And uh, I am eagerly waiting to listen uh, Dr. Pradeep Bairi uh, a lot. And I hope that I learn a lot. Uh, also, all our viewers regarding the interpretation of the mental rubrics, and uh, definitely our dear student, Dr. Uh, Satrajit Naska, who is now lecturer in DND Homeopathy Medical College, a very bright student and a very gentle and simple guy. So definitely, I would also like uh, to hear from him regarding the difficult and incurable cases his experiences. Uh, hope both the lectures will enrich us and without any much delay. Uh, so let us start with our program. Uh, first, I would like to request uh, Dr. Satyajit Naskar to present his presentation. Hello. Dr. Naskar, are you ready or uh, we should move with Dr. Bairi? I think uh, Dr. Uh, Bairi, sir, will be uh, the first speaker. Ompriya, ma'am. Okay. Okay, then uh, first I will request uh, our uh, most beloved Professor Dr. Pairi to please uh, start his presentation. Sir, please. Uh, respected Dr. Choudhury, Dr. Kulani, beloved Ompriya, Shutujit, Vidut, and also my respected professional colleagues. I'm proud to be the alumni of NIH. And I, again, I feel proud that alumni association in their scientific meet in the, invited me to deliver my experience regarding the, or better to say my understanding about the mental rubrics. Before going to discuss about the matter, I like to uh, convey my gratitude regarding the topics to my teachers from which I learned about the interpretation. And not only that, but also throughout the world, there are various homeopaths who delivered their lectures regarding the mental rubrics and also prepared their materia medica by introducing the meaning of the mental rubrics. But before going to detailing about this, I say that I think the mental rubrics is the most difficult task for a homeopathic physician to collect the mental symptoms. We know that you all will aware about the fact that the mental rubrics, mental symptoms are superior to all kinds of the symptoms as mentioned by Dr. Hanneman in his organ medicine, as well as also 
by the various stalwarts, namely Dr. Kent and others. But most difficult part is that how to collect the mental symptoms and how to interpret the mental symptoms and after that how we can able to understand the real meaning of the mental uh, symptoms and thereby apply the meaning of this mental beliefs in our clinical practice. So for this reason, uh, today I only share four or five such mental rubrics uh, about their interpretation, their meaning, their practical application. I think by which way I got my experience regarding the mental rubrics, first I tell about this. First of all, we know that if we go through the Kentian uh, repertory, then it was first started in the year 1897. All of you know that. But it was first published in the full form book in the year 1899. Since then, there are so many mental rubrics in Kent's repertory at present in the 1961. Does First Indian edition or the sixth American edition, there is 527 mental rubrics. But first of all, if we go in details about the mental uh, rubrics, what we notice that to understand the meaning, uh, whatever I have tried, that is, I try to know the actual meaning of that word, say it is abandoned. What is the actual meaning of the word abandoned? And with the help of the dictionary. That's why I search the meaning from dictionary starting from the year 1600 AD and up to 1900. Now say what is the meaning of this word and how the word is used in various literature that is in the arts, in commerce, in science, after that, the author used this word in various aspects. And then how Dr. Kent kept this word or kept the rubric and what are the medicines under that rubric. And then my uh, next search is to find the medicines having the rubrics. Uh, uh, having uh, the rubrics having the medicines and thereby how this medicine during the time of the proving records the prover present the rubric in their language at the same time how the descriptive materia medica writers explain that word and explain that meaning in their language and lastly the interpreted meaning derived from the dictionary meaning, the literary support, the support from that of the arts, commerce and the science, how the rubric described by the various provers, namely Dr. Allen's encyclopedia, Dr. Herring guiding symptoms, Dr. Hanneman's metabetic apura and also the chronic diseases. And finally, how the descriptive better medical writer, namely Dr. Kent, Dr. Bonnie Hoshin, Dr. Bogart, even Dr. Dunham, Dr. Tyler, Dr. Farrington, Dr. Nash, and also how it is interpreted by the present era, Dr. Vitulkas and others, Dr. Philip Bailey, like this. After that interpreted meaning, I try to understand my patient through case taking. And if my case, my patient is in the same line of the interpreted meaning, only uh, the rubric is taken for the consideration for the prescription. Okay. So let us try to uh, give some example related to this. Please take screen now. Or go. First of all, you see that our first rubric in our repertory, namely Dr. Kane's repertory, there is one rubric abandoned. 
you all know that there is no medicine only it is the cross reference rubric and it is the cross reference rubric is the four second see four second i try to understand abandon first through the dictionary meaning what is the meaning of the abandon in dictionary and for this reason i used oxford english dictionary the and then there are various meaning starting from given up relinquished for second cast off and also you can see that any influence or pursuit devoted now always to things evil or the opposed to reason if you go through the literary support a defo one of the uh, literature person and also kalerij one of another literature person in the year 1722 and 1834 respectively they also use the word abandon in their article in their writings first of all defo he mentioned that the people uh, sat still quite abandoned to despair this is one where the dictionary meaning and how the literature how the literature describe the word second if you go through the repertorial arrangement what you noticed there are so many uh, rubrics in kate's repertory starting from abandoned c for second deserted c for second loneliness c for second isolation sensation of c for second and ultimately for second feeling so there are five rubrics only there is presence of the medicine in one that is the four second feeling so from that if you go that abandoned abandoned means that is the given us cast off deserted the same meaning loneliness same meaning but actually to know the actual what is the meaning to understand this if you go through this if notice that there are four medicines which are in the first act namely oram metallicum i uh, sorry three medicines namely oram metallicum shorinam and palsetel in kids report and there are also several second gate medicine and the third gate medicine i will not go in details about the other medicines but if you go through this try to understand what is how the prover present this abandon how the prover presents the abandon in oram met in sorinam in palsetel so that's why we have to search the prover's records in the proving recorded book namely the allen's encyclopedia hearing guiding symptoms as well as chronic disease and the materia medica pura what we notice there if we notice there in oram metallica you notice there that in pf allen's encyclopedia of the pure materia medica how dr allen noted the prover's language he noted that one of the prover mentioned he is dejected and seeks solitude he imagines he has lost the affection of his friends this makes him sad even uh, to tears it is in the volume 2 uh, so dr allen noted the prover's language even if you go through the at present uh, the descriptive metabolic of dr george vitulkas you see that these are people who feel themselves quite separate from the world they tend to remain by themselves they do not have friends to whom they can turn when they feel depressed or disappointed so mind that that abandoned from the repertorial presentation and from the meaning of the dictionary and the presentation by the various literary persons and also presentation by Metri America in purest form or in the descriptive form. We one thing notice that that abandoned, that is the deserted, that is the feeling of the person. So it is the subjective symptoms. I feel that I am abandoned. I feel that I have forsaken feeling. 
so it is the subject is simple that's why it is most important one he or she may not be abandoned at all but if she feels that i am deserted i am cast off i am given up i am relinquished only then i can uh, we can take uh, the rubric if you go through the shorinam if you go through the kate symmetry medica you notice that the mental symptom present some strong features sadness hopelessness he takes no joy in his family feels that their things are not for him no joy realization of benefit mind that their things are not for him feels that she feels or he feels not somebody tell that he is abandoned sometimes we notice that there are some abandoned uh, buildings somebody abandoned him but here it is not like this it is the patient who feels that i am abandoned no joy no realization of the benefit extreme relatable wants to be alone full of anxiety even of the suicide despair of recovery it sickness if you notice the how we can able to interpret actually uh, i uh, shortcut the uh, other uh, information which is already uh, with me for the today's presentation it is only uh, 40 minutes that's why uh, i directly go to the interpreted meaning if you go through the interpreted meaning what you will notice the deserted and left alone state of the mind is the pivot of the patient as well as the medicine so we know that one thing that if a medicine can produce a symptoms only then the medicine can cure the symptoms so if we notice that that deserted or the left alone state of the mind as well as the patient it is the mind of the patient and mind of the prover that's why the medicine also possesses the left alone state and the patient also possesses the left alone state there are so many medicines having the same feeling if you go notice that already in the first grade there the aura med sorinam and the palsitilla but there are also in the second grade and the third grade medicines but if we just go through the mentioned six medicine already i have mentioned only the uh, six uh, here only two medicines we get the idea that this post second feeling may arise from the feeling that some may lose confidence on them thought that they are very sincere to their duty and their shattered ego having failure to keep the responsibility may depress them that means i am very much responsible but i feel that my family members or my society or my uh, working environment they do not seem so and i i feel and that's why there is responsibility to depress them and thereby in this as we noticed in oram metallicum you know that oram metallicum is a medicine is made up of the gold and oram med patient is very much industrious and oram med patient is very much uh, self respectful and they have their capability to do hard work and if the oram med patient seems that yes in my office in my family in my uh, environment i feel that nobody care for me and then the depression and the suicidal disposition comes on or due to the feeling of the lack of everything if you go through this support of attention of others in case of the surinam surinam six the attention but if you go through the uh, proving records of surinam if you go through the proving record uh, the descriptive writings of surinam regarding the uh, only uh, the abundant you notice there that in in all respect the prover the uh, beti medical writer they explain that there have some feeling of lack of everything because the he seeks attitude attention but people do not care mind that he feels that people are not attentive to him or her similarly the palsitilla patient also seeks love but he feels or she feels that yes the i am uh, not caring about and i i, I am I, i am not uh, taking the uh, too much love from my uh, family members or the others now the question will come in some cases cases if you notice in this uh, earthly world 
that some cases like the artist, philosopher, scientist, who is much ahead of their time, may feel isolated. You know that uh, their creation of their isolation. During their creation, they, they take, uh, the, uh, that's why there is one sub rubric also taken in the uh, four second, that is the sensation of isolation, feeling due to not being properly understood. Find that, yes, the, uh, they think that what I am thinking, uh, it reads uh, the solitude and thereby uh, they are or sometimes the philosophers, scientists, uh, they are ahead of their time. They cannot be understand, are understood by the other people. The feeling of being alone, giving up, are strangely to evil influences the people who feel themselves quite separate from the world. They tend to remain by themselves. Mind that. That abandoned, that is the four second feeling. It is the feeling of the patient and he or she feels that, yes, I am separated from the rest of the, here is the rest of the world I am using, but here is the rest of the family members, rest of the environment. That's why it is her feeling or his feeling. In true sense, it is the subjective feeling of the patient. Now, I am sharing one case. One thing is very interesting. A lady, 22 years, complaining of difficulty in the breathing for the last five years. Her breathing difficulty usually uh, aggravated uh, during uh, the change of the weather while sitting. Her maternal uncle has the same suffering. So uh, just uh, it is the gist of a case. Uh, five years she is suffering from the difficulty in the breathing. The family stay also there is the difficulty in the breathing. Up and after being plucked in the school final examination, she stopped going to school. That at the age of the 16 years, or the uh, now she is uh, 22 years or 17 years, when she uh, appeared in the school final examinations, in the she plucked. And her mother died, elder mother got married. Her only job is now to help her sister in law in her household work. Household work. She also found that, that the, her father now pay much attention to the newly born niche that uh, to her. She feels that my father is not taking care for me. At present, he's taking care for his for his niche. And that is the he, his or her feeling, her feeling only, mind that, her feeling. She felt that other members of the family don't bother to inquire about the suffering, her likings, or any other matter. She feels alone, separated from the family. Lost hope for recovery. She's chilly with offensive sweat and persistent thought of suicide. So for this reason, what we came to know that, the one thing is that, as per the abundant meaning in the word meaning, and also the descriptive metamedical writer's language, and also the prover's language, as well as also, uh, it is used in the various uh, stalwarts, uh, various uh, uh, literature person, or the scientist, or the, in the commerce, there is one thing, that it is one of the subjective relinquished, deserted, or the giving up feeling. And in this case, that lady, after being plucked in the examination, and after her uh, elder brother got married, and after the birth of the prince, she felt that nobody caring her. Although it is not clear that whether they are really neglected, neglected or not, but it is her feeling that I am neglected. And so the rubric abandoned or the four second feeling it is most justified. And I have taken the rubric. And this is uh, one of the case. Uh, and that's why the, I, I think that there are so many rubrics can be uh, taken from this case. If you go through this, uh, you'll see that four second feeling, one of the rubric taken. Despair of recovery is another rubric. Suicidal disposition, heat, vital lack of pants, because I say that is, is chilly. And there is very much offensive perspiration and the difficult sitting that is the respiration. And after that, uh, we go through the repertorization, and there are so many medicines coming to the, uh, the repertorial set that is the repertorial selection. But considering the patient's condition, that is, if you go through this, as if the patient is much more indicated of a patient of Shorayana. Yes, the patient prescribed Shorayana. And after that, uh, we can able to. Uh, reduced her difficulty in the breathing and finally we can able to cure her though as per the knowledge concerned regarding the treatment of the chronic diseases you all know that 
they uh, there are several antisorics may require due to the time of treatment but the initially the patient uh, was treated with the help of the sorinum and it uh, uh, she got the immense relief from the medicine sorinum and followed by the other medicine so here in this uh, uh, today in this evening uh, i like to share this case to understand uh, the abundant rubric and how we can able to understand the abundant and how we can able to uh, interpret it and how, how we can able to uh, use this rubric in our clinical practice this is uh, one uh, rubric uh, for this uh, uh, for this evening today i can only share or, or, or two or three uh, can i ask one question that how many times uh, uh, you can allot it for me now at, at in this moment hello om priya please continue you can you can you can continue for one hour sir no uh, another one hour no no no, no. That, 30 minutes is over 30 minutes the rest, more. rest 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 already i have spent 20 or 25 minutes yes sir okay 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 so another half an hour na huh? yes sir yes sir okay okay okay, okay. please continue sir okay. yeah okay okay, okay. Next, if you go through the another rubric, abrupt. This is also very interesting rubric. If you go through this, uh, abrupt. You go through the dictionary meaning. You see that there is uh, the dictionary meaning is broken away from restraint, broken off, termination in a break, characterized by sudden interruption or the change, unannounced and unexpected, sudden. Hasty, uh, 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 sudden, hasty, and unexpected, sudden, hasty, passing suddenly from thought to thought or from phrase to phrase, usually in literature. So, this is the dictionary meaning. Find that. If you go through this, actually, if you go through the literary support, how the abrupt, that means abrupt means it is hurried, it is fast. But abrupt is much more faster than fast. Definitely the superlative degree and first test, and also much more than sudden, much more than hurry. <coughs> it is so subtle. That's why, from literary support, we see that there is abrupt resolve the time and relenting is there in soft. Thought he is abrupt in order to awake attention and give it in a right direction. That is uh, another thing. Now go through the uh, homeopathic point of view. We only know that there is only uh, rubric abrupt. There is no cost reference rubric. And we know that the there is two medicines. One is the tarantula and another is the natamur. We know that there is only one medicine. And one is the tarantula and another is the natamur. Now the question, how the prover present the uh, rubric if we go to Tarantula in Herring's guiding symptom, you notice that sudden fox-like destructive efforts requiring utmost vigilance to prevent damage, followed by laughter and applauses. Mind that. The prover, it is the sudden fox-like cunning movement fox like cunning destructive efforts she is so fast or he is so fast nobody can prevent him and do these things without the giving uh, with the proper attention if you go through the uh, dr bhitulkash uh, very nicely uh, described it the tarantula activity is always very fast everything must be done with the greatest speed the person being begins to lose control and becomes destructive. That is uh, one of the descriptive media medical writers writing. If you go through the Dr. Emil Tyler's description, you notice that Dr. Robert's opinion regarding Tarantula, one Tarantula patient whom I knew seemed to be quiet and peaceable. The nurse left the room and instantly the patient jumped from bed, swept over every thing from the rack and was back in bed before the nurse could go back. Mind that. That is a very uh, 
uh, example, I think this example is sufficient to understand the rubric abrupt. Patient is uh, lying or the sitting in his bed. The nurse is working in his table in her table, and at the same time, just see uh, enter into the adjacent room, and within a few seconds, he came back and noticed that the boy within this period jumped and thereby destroyed the things in the table. But when she observed, the she is in the bed as it was, it is as, as it was. Not so fast, so sudden. If you go through this to interpret this, what you notice? The state is characterized by the sudden interruption or change. Mind that I am telling about only tarantula. Here, if you notice that tarantula abruptments is and the natamur abruptment is something different. That will be cleared here. The state is characterized by sudden interruption of change without any notice or warning. Sudden disconnected being abrupt makes it difficult for other person to prepare themselves in mind dealing with such person. The rubric is very close to hurry. And if you go to hurry, that is also tarantula is also hurry. Natamur is also hurry. And they are also placed in there in the first grade. But they are placed in the hurry rubric in the first grade. But they are placed in this abrupt, no medicine in the first bed. Here, if you go there, the, that natamur and teratula show it can be inferred that abrupt is much more faster and subtle than hurry. Explosion of energy. There is simply to no time for formalities. Tarantula patient, if you uh, read. Uh, Tarantula, you notice that uh, one author explained Tarantula very nicely. It is like that of the spring coil. If you release the coil, it will suddenly uh, go to the resting state. So suddenly, just like this Tarantula activity, his neurological stimulus, his mental activity so fast, he or she did it within the short period. Faster, 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 so subtle, it is more hurried, faster. And also, at the same time, reserved person or being questioned repeatedly, he makes abrupt answer. That is also one answer that is abrupt. Abrupt, if you go through the synthetic repertory, you notice that there are certain sub rubrics like abrupt rap, abrupt harsh, abrupt rap, yet affectionate. Very interesting. Very interesting. Here is only one rubric. There is no sub rubric in Ken's repertory. But if you go through the synthetic repertory, you notice there are many medicines and having sub rubric. And in practice, uh, it, that can also be explained that what is abrupt rough, what is abrupt harsh, and what is abrupt harsh, uh, rough, and affectionate. In my class, uh, I can able to, uh, in my student, uh, I can explain by uttering this how it will be in the abrupt raft, how it will be in the abrupt horse, how it will be in the abrupt uh, rough and uh, affection. And you notice that there is rough and affection and there is only first grade medicine. That is the pulsatilla. Mind that. Pulsatilla may also be rough, but pulsatilla, the background of the medicine is the affection. If there is no affection, if it is only rough, no, don't think of pulsatilla. So let us... Uh, we continue about the abrupt. Now come to the one case. What do you notice there? A boy, age at four years, this is in my uh, clinics. A boy, age at four years, was brought to the clinic and his mother reported that the boy is having a recurrent convulsive attack. Mind that. Uh, actually, uh, this case, one of the case is uh, suddenly have uh, convulsive attacks. And sometimes staring look for the few seconds. All of you know that it is the one of the uh, epileptic attacks. Uh, it is the uh, epileptic attacks. And the two and a half and the since the range of the two and a half years without any time and the relationship of the specificity. But only one thing common that eyes become fixed before each attack. 
he was treated allopathically on examination uh, actually on examination easy they, uh, they also notice that during the time of the sleeping easy there and they think that it is a case of the epileptic fits and they used to take the medicine for the anti epileptic drugs but one thing they came to me for the treatment of uh, their uh, only son but one thing is very interesting that just the boy kept away from me but as soon as i am hearing his, uh, her mother suddenly she came to my uh, table and suddenly broke my stethoscope so suddenly i cannot able to prevent him although he was playing at the time and away from me that's why lesion found that and uh, his mother also told that he has no sleep always remain active uh, now doing uh, this and the suddenly changes to other without giving ear to the warning they can fear to send him with the other person to the behavior even the boy is using the slang language during the time of his conversation with the friends and also in the uh, other uh, family members suddenly snatched his pen and also taken back and the stethoscope before being precaution is taken the mother also informed that the boy is very uh, fond of the music and always so he came to know that and this is a case and uh, typically if i say that the patient is very much fond of the music the patient is using slang language you all think about the medicine tarantula but th this is not the uh, clue or this is not the vital point that he is using uh, slang language there are so many patient having uh, using slang language and that slang language is also depending on the social uh, and their educational familial background and also their environment like this but here he is in a reputed family okay that's another matter but here is uh, not due to the prescription of the tarantula it is not due to uh, the reason because he is uh, using the slang language but one thing the one very strong mental symptoms that he is fast enough he is so subtle about his activity <coughs> he is abrupt and also these medic these uh, symptoms that is using slang languages and also uh, uh using uh, the, the the bad behavior this guide me to uh, prescribe uh, tarantula as also it was supported by that he is uh, keeping himself in the quiet during the time of the music and this case and this case actually uh, uh, treated by me and also uh, uh, at the time at least i know uh, him for uh, up to the age of the 15 years uh, actually he was cured with the help of the medicine uh, tarantula now i like to share another uh, another uh, word better to say at uh, okay another rubric activity desires all of you know that uh, actually i i'm not telling about the absorbed i'm telling about the abstraction of the mind and the absent minded uh, i think uh, this rubric will be uh, must be understand uh, properly activity desires actually if we go through the dictionary meaning we notice that the state of being active the exertion of energy action the state of quality of being abundantly active brisk vigorous action energy diligence nimbleness liveliness these are the, all the dictionary meaning mind that uh, it's better to uh, understand everybody the sham of the mental rubrics in kent's repertory are the self explanatory yes you all know that the sham of the mental rubrics are the self explanatory no need to be explained or interpreted it is uh, what itself is the meaningful but there are so many rubrics and activity desires is also one of the so called self explanatory but to understand it this uh, must be understood properly if you go through this repertorial arrangement there is you notice that there is one uh, thing that activity desires she industrious so it is one of the 
actually cross refer to the rubric industrials now what i noticed in the industrials there is first grade aura metallicum terrain tubular second grade barite carb crop cars hashyama signesia lacase sopium cpia like this but we all know from the metre medical study that yes the activity desire and the industrials the patient can take the workload much more in this respect acid flour is one of the one of the medicine characteristic having this characteristic symptom but unfortunately or due to some reason dr kent uh, did not incorporate this acid flour in the uh, rubric industries i will present one case but if you go through the other repertory work namely the synthetic repertory and also others here we notice that yes fluoric acid is also incorporated now according to our schema we go through the proof records what we noticed dr herring in his guiding symptoms uneasy hurried desire for mental and bodily activity cannot do things fast enough cannot do things fast enough next dr vitulkas very nicely explained this in an attempt to control the poisonous process which seems to be what taking the emotional level or a med patient turn more and more to mental activity they are very industrious and hard working but to a pathological degree work become an outlet to avoid the discomfort of an emotional life which has become increasingly isolated and under the rest it was dr vitulkas uh, I, i i like to explain it's again uh, constantly being engaged in action to visit a demand for action devotion to hard work the industrious person in contrast to the one who is bitter for being occupied does things that are always productive and can continue to enjoy leisure periods this state of quality of being abundantly active mind that uh, actually if we noticed oram met uh, in one occasion that is the in uh, the first second feeling already i described about the oram met the compassion if you uh, uh, noticed uh, there that oram met is made up of the gold and oram met has the two mental activity one is one is she can or he can work hard and he always wants to reach the top and he always want to keep the top chair and that's why say in at the top official personnel of an office or an industry he, he will work hard for what reason he thinks that my sub assistant is trying to occupy the chair so in order to keep my chair in shape i have to work hard the one reason and another reason they are the lover of gold yes i want to do hard work to earn more more money so in this for this two reason that is the keeping the chair in shape and to earn much more money the persons work hard 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 and that's why that's why the oram met patient is very much industrious at the same time the nakshubika patient is also industrious and they are very much particulate they are very much particular and if you go there uh the next there is one case but this case it is of the acid flow and uh, fortunately uh, this was a case uh, in my uh, master degree uh, during my master degree uh, that it was a case of uh, dr lk prodhan uh, who actually uh, asked me to see the patient uh, if you go through this a professional uh, person actually actually he is a uh, public speaker in the busy leaders he has to meet many persons and attend the several meetings in a day and often had to travel 
uh, actually uh, he has one ulcer at the gr right grade two with discoloration and the swelling of the whole foot. And that's why he was consulted with the allopathic physician and they tried with the antibiotics and they advised him to take the surgical intervention for the fear of impending gangrene. And at that time, um, uh, he met us. And often he had to travel from different parts of the state as per his schedule. He even often fails to keep the appointment with the doctor. After thorough case taking, Dr. Pothan came to know that the patient is hot and prescribed him acid flow 202 doses to be taken into empty stomach for the two consecutive days, followed by the plasu and was asked to review after 15 days. He reported after uh, one month with almost disappearance of the ulcer. And uh, this was a very interesting case. And here, one thing is that the trade union leader and who is busy and never fatigued and always working hard. And even the uh, that uh, heat or the hot uh, environment and never uh, keep him away uh, from his work. And also, that's here is the one rubric is taken that is the industrious. But mind that here in Kent's separatory, the in, under industrious, the acid flow was not there. But yes, we can cure cases with the oram made. And here, the difference is that in oram made, the reason for the industrious already described me in explaining his uh, the mental uh, faculty mental attitude now uh, actually from this uh, case uh, we are taking this rubri so i will not go in details uh, in this uh, manner next come to the admonition actually if you know that this is the, i think uh, this will be my uh, last or the second last presentation today <clears throat> as because I am al already uh, covering 51 minutes. If you know that the admonition is the uh, action, that is the action of admonishing authority, counsel, warning, implied reproof, an act of admonishing, a warning, reproof, an utterance of the statement of the grave counsel or the senses, especially of the inexplicable sense. If you go through this, Repertory in there is only uh, two medicines. One is the belladonna and one another is the platina, and and both of them are in the second. Go through the metamedica in belladonna. Doctor uh, Herring, very sensitive, irritable mood, very excitable mood, easily brought to tears, fretfulness. Nothing seemed right to him. Was vexed with himself by like this. Now, if you go through the interpreted meaning, mind that admonition here, the one thing is very interesting. That is, at the rubric has two parts. One is one word is the admonition, and in Keynes repertory, another thing uh, the aggravation. That means here the patient have admonition aggravation. And what is admonition? Admonition is that mild rebuke. And the why rebuke? for her rectification to whom i can rebuke it is whom he has the for authority he has the authority say a boy in the roadside doing some wrong thing i also rebuke him that is not admonition but a student who is in my class and doing some wrong thing, I can rebuke her because I am I have the authority. I am the authority. And why I rebuke? I rebuke for her rectification. But what type of rebuke? It is mild rebuke. It is gentle rebuke. So, admonition literally means a mild rebuke to one for his rectification by one who has the authority. That's why in a simple word, uh, two words, authoritative counseling. So, the authoritative counseling, authority may counsel through mild review for rectification. We notice that there are two medicines that is, the belladonna and the platina. In belladonna, admonition aggravates due to this oversensitiveness. Belladonna is very much reactive, very much oversensitive. And of the brain, whereas in platina, 
it is there is one the, for this interpretation there is one uh, background that is superiority complex superiority complex for this reason the patient seems this situation hamper his or her pride in presence of my colleagues in presence of the others sir rebuke me and it can destroy my pride because she has or he has superiority complex in the all direction that's why she has aggravation she has aggravation and she always had strong superiority complex so she cannot tolerate such counsel and thereby there is aggravation so there is admonition aggravation to whom i can prescribe belladonna and to whom i can prescribe platinum mind that is again from for a homeopathic inter for a homeopathic uh, physicians we always follow the yes that single symptom single symptoms if it is not covering the whole of the patient that is the totality of the symptoms yes only depending on a single symptoms we never prescribe first of all these symptoms may be considered if the totality uh, and maybe the part of the totality of the symptoms and may take the responsibility for the uh, selection of the medicine so only by seeing the one events and the one uh, mental symptoms we never prescribe but in order to prescribe the medicine we must consider that two condition that is the admonition aggravation as well as uh, for the belladonna from what what point and for the platina from what point a lady 18 years this is also in my clinic's case actually uh, she is complaining of the uh, the, uh, the itching of the genitalia whereas discharge from the vagina like that of the white on an egg she suffers from constipation during the menses otherwise normal she usually suffers from uh, a recurrent attack of the headache and aching pain in the limbs without in, uh, any side specificity and she stood uh, first in the hs examination in her subdivision her sister told that she uh, usually suffer from some mental and the physical problem if been rebuked by parents even so mildly she is so emotional and that's why parents cannot told anything to her though she make her bad make some bad things and so here due to the due to her haughty nature at the uh, following uh, rubrics that is one of the rubrics uh, was taken that is the admonition aggravation along with the other symptoms and i think uh, i think uh, the case was cured with the help of the platina and by giving the importance to that of the superiority complex as well as uh, the aching limbs and the constipation and the other vaginal itching and the discharges those were the particular symptoms uh, particular symptoms so along with this there are several other general symptoms not only the mental generals but also the physical generals we know that uh, the alleation until uh, the totality totality of the symptoms is the symptoms which can cover the patient as a whole for that time for that case so if the the platina uh, in my case the platina can cover uh, the every symptoms and uh, the totality of the symptoms and thereby she was cured with the help of the platina i think it will take time to uh, explain about affectation so so for the time uh, scheduled given uh, to me it is uh, already one hour uh, i hope that if anything wrong you can uh, you noticed here in my, my presentation yes you can tell me otherwise uh, i asked the organizer ompriya uh, hello priya yes sir uh, okay uh, thank you to the listener for bearing me this evening uh, i hope that if anybody in this or can apply this uh, types of the information in their clinical practice i will be happy enough or otherwise if you have any question you can raise me uh, today perhaps i will not be stay much more time as because i have another engagement uh, still if uh, anything to tell you can ask to dr ompia me show ompia uh, uh, show my uh, presentation is over so you can conclude thank you thank you sir thanks a lot for your one of the most uh, very valuable uh, presentations which offer lot many learning points for all of us
so after a long time i listen to you and really uh, i hope that uh, all the listeners who are uh, now listening or uh, in future they will listen to you uh, through youtube definitely they will uh, their, their knowledge will be enriched by this proper explanations and very nice and appropriate explanations of a uh, few rubrics that you shared now we will wait for few more presentation few more uh, explanations uh, the proper explanation the way that you explain that each and every word you know, not word by root each and every rubric by the dictionary meanings uh, and uh, then the homeopathic explanations and starting from the previous view so and the definitely the quotes from the uh, most of the stall words so definitely each and everything that uh, the abandoned Uh, definitely abandon and for second the first rubric of the kind repertory so that is uh, that uh, each and everybody's uh, what to tell uh, that will knock uh, each and everybody's mind whenever they will open the repertory and the thing is so much clearly explained and each and every rubric the abandoned abrupt activity desires and admonition aggravations these four rubrics at least i think that those who have uh, gone through this uh lecture today and they will never uh, ever uh, make any failure in their prescriptions in future the the explanation is so nice thanks a lot thanks a lot dr bairi uh, really i feel that it's one of the very good uh, explanations and presentations on this uh, mental uh, rubric explanations and uh, yes uh, regarding the point abrupt uh, Uh, sometimes the newcomers whatever whoever may come they can be confused with the terminology of abrupt and impulsiveness so definitely the abrupt and impulsiveness uh, what is impulsiveness this is a involuntary emotional action without planning or consideration of the result whereas abrupt is sudden and unexpected often with the unpleasant result related to mood or behavior so while uh, the cases that uh, described that was described by dr bairi for abrupt uh, regarding the uh, the case uh, the case explained by him uh, for tarantula so if we can consider that we can find that there is no relation of emotions whereas if it will be impulsive means definitely there will be the emotional outburst where as you all know that hepar self is one of the very good medicines there are lot many others also so yes uh, this is uh, all regarding uh, the presentation of dr bairi uh, we and uh, thanks a lot i am again extending my thanks to dr bairi uh, hope if any question will be there the the listeners they can put their questions over here dr bairi will be here Uh, for few more minutes uh, as he told that he has some other uh, um, uh, other other engagement prior engagements so uh, please put your questions if you are having anything and let us move forward with the uh, next presentation now i'll request uh, our next presenter dr satyajit naskar to please move forward with his presentation good evening om priya ma'am and uh, my pranam to all my teachers the seniors present in this platform please or to please my present and thank you good evening to all of you now we are discussing the topic homeopathy difficult and incurable diseases we will share their few cases first the case of venus legal sir now 
If we go to Balian Love's Practice of Surgery, 27th edition, it is mentioned this associated, this venous leg ulcer is associated with profound impairment in quality of life. These ulcers are frequently difficult to heal and prone to recurrence. Treatment is associated with a high cost to healthcare system and patients. And mainstay of treatment is reduction in venous hypertension with compression. So, a patient presented with leg ulcer after long treatment in modern medicine and ultimately he was told that this ulcer is almost incurable and you have to go through some management like wearing tight stockings and with some medicines to reduce the pain or burning. This was the case. Venous leg ulcer presented with desquamation of skin, crack in skin with discharge of bloody fluid with pain and burning. On the next visit, and he was prescribed with homeopathic medicine according to the rules and regulations. On the next visit, sorry, on the next visit, the desquamation was decreased. There was no crack and discharge also disappeared. He was followed by the rules of homeopathy with medicines. This is the next visit. Also according to the rules of homeopathy, he was prescribed with medicine. This was the next visit. Now, the outcome. The outcome has two parts in local lesion and quality of life change. In local lesion, the ulcer completely healed with special mention without any external application and the quality of life change. Patient does his daily work. Here I have to mention the patient is a bookseller in College Street. He has to stand many hours in his shop. So it was a risk factor for him also. Even though patient does his daily work, ulcer didn't record or any other complaints in leg. Now to mention here the patient was followed up even he is now with contact that last since last two years he is not taking any medicine for that ulcer there appeared no complications regarding that ulcer or the ulcer didn't recur this was the final visit Now, the next case, it is a case of diagnosed rheumatoid arthritis, where the anti-CCP was 179.93. To mention here, a special mention here, as I am uh, talking in NIH alumni group, this was the case of rheumatoid arthritis in NIH OPD only. Later on, he was in contact with me. Why I mentioned NIH that I work 
I am practicing with my little knowledge of homeopathy. I, whatever confidence I have, the most of the credit goes to my college, National Institute of Homeopathy. So this was the first presentation. On the first day, the patient presented with pain and swelling in joints, the classical presentation of rheumatoid arthritis, and the anti-CCP was 179.93, and he was referred from a medical college with the words that it is incurable, we cannot help you. So they came to homeopathy as a last option, and he was uh, he was prescribed medicine according to the symptom similarity. Now, here, although it is after five years, the treatment procedure take a long time, and later on, when she had no complaints of pain and swelling of joints and uh, those presenting presenting complaints were not there, then this anti-CCP was again examined and anti-CCP is 1.87 below the norm, uh, within the normal range. Later on, again anti-CCP was checked and it was 8.5. Here, special mention on 22-4-2027, sorry, 2017, uh, the anti-CCP was 1.87 U per ml. Later on, it is 8, anti-CCP 8.5 reference limit per ml because the assay was a different method, different method was applied for this essay and this 8.5 is within the normal limit here negative is less than 25 so it was a case of rheumatoid arthritis her anti-cc was 179 now within normal the outcome is anti-cc 179.83 to 8.5, quality of life change, patient brought with pain and swelling of joints, unable to move, and other classical presentations of rheumatoid arthritis. Now she is working in the field as she was a housewife in a pharma family. She has to work hard even in the field also. Now case number three. Again, it is the case of remote arthritis. Anti-CCP 375.62. On first visit, he was prescribed with she was prescribed with medicine. The next anti-CCP was checked. It is 308.41. Next, it is 217.4. Forty-eight point six nine. She is under treatment and she is doing well. Her complaints, presenting complaints, almost nil. But we are continuing with treatment with her and hoping that this anti-CCP will come within normal. So her outcome is serological change. Anti-CCP antibody 375.62 and now it is 48.69. Quality of life change, present brought with pain and swelling of joints, unable to move. Now pain much ameliorated than before and patient is still under treatment. Case 4, another case of rheumatoid arthritis. Our anti-CCP was more than 500. She was prescribed with medicine. Then on next visit, 345. <clears throat> on next visit, 292. On next visit, 284. She is also under treatment. 
here is the outcome anticipatory more than 500 280.4 and quality of life also improved now as we are talking about difficult and incurable cases so we all patient and physician are concerned about cure only now cure requisite for cure three factors are there patient physician and medicine now we are we will discuss about difficult to cure cases this word difficult why it is difficult this difficulty may come from two ways the case taking is difficult and medicine selection is difficult now the first point case taking is difficult why case taking is difficult there may be lack of symptoms or there may be lack of symptoms it depends on on two factors patient and physician responsibility and disease also now why what is the responsibility of the patient if patient doesn't express her symptoms or patient express in wrong way or patient express in more exaggerated form or patient express in less as mentioned by dr hanneman in aphorism 96 about the hypochondriac patient and in 97 aphorism 97 about the indolence patient so in first case they present in exaggerated form and in the second case the patient patient presents in less symptoms because of the indolence false modesty weakness of mind and mildness of disposition now the physician's responsibility there are four points insufficient questioning the physician is igno ignorant the physician is too hurried and wrong interpretation of symptoms so we have to abide by the laws of Hanneman as mentioned in organon medicine qualities of the physician during test taking what are the qualities mentioned in aphorism 83 freedom from prejudice sound senses attention in observing and fidelity in pressing the picture of the disease this fidelity in pressing the picture of the disease i think most important point is fidelity in pressing the picture of the disease how much faithful the doctor is now disease itself is lacking in symptoms like one-sided diseases as mentioned by dr hanneman in aphorism 173 the only diseases that seem to have but few symptoms and on that account to be less amenable to cure are those which may be termed as one-sided because they display only one or two principal symptoms which obscure almost all others so this one-sided diseases display less symptoms now medicine selection difficulties regarding medicine selection this medicine selection as we know medicine is a science of experience its object is to eradicate diseases by means of remedies so medicine is a science of experience a beginner like me with very little knowledge can select most of the time select wrong medicines but our teachers with profound knowledge of 
homeopathy, organon of medicine, materia medica, and all other subjects, they most of the time select the exact minimum. So it depends on the knowledge. As medicine is a science of experience. Now we uh, we will come to the point. Next point: incurable cases. Why incurable? Now this curability has different meaning in views of modern medicine and homeopathic medicine. In modern medicinal view, irreversible pathological changes. I put here a question mark. Why I put here a question mark? Because the cases which are stamped as incurable cases by modern medicine many a times may be successfully treated with homeopathic medicine. Now, if we specially mention, there are two types of diseases as mentioned in modern medicine. Therapeutically incurable, but can be managed by surgery, like hernia and piles, fissure, fistula, like that. Tumors. So, we are not talking about that portion of disease which can, which is only man only can be managed by surgery because homeopathy treat those diseases which does not come in the province of manual surgery as mentioned by Dr. Hanneman is aphorism 13. So we are talking about the disease which does not come in the province of manual surgery. Now the viewpoint is different in case of modern medicine. Modern in modern medicinal view, some diseases may be treatable by or managed by surgery only, but those diseases can be treated by internal medicine that is therapeutic, therapeutically managed by homeopathy. Homeopathic view. In homeopathy, Cure depends on many factors. Beautifully mentioned by Dr. George Vitolkas in Science of Homeopathy, the factors on which curability depends. Number one, the pathological diagnosis. Next, the strength of the patient's constitution, nature and nature of response to previous remedies, the clarity of the image of the remedy in the moment, the strength and weakness of the ancestors of the patient. If we go to the first point, the pathological diagnosis. A severe pathological diagnosis does not signify that the disease is incurable. But it should be taken into consideration. If we go through the definition of totality of symptoms in fourth edition of organonal medicine, where Hanuman mentioned his pathological point of view, pathological diagnosis or pathology regarding the pathology, which later on Dr. Constantine Herring later on told that this was the most perfect definition of totality of symptoms. Now the strength of the patient's constitution. 
a younger younger patients with strong constitution initially have much better chance of recovery than elderly and weakened patients the nature of response to previous remedies if in previous treatment there was if the responses were merely temporary the prognosis is adverse but if there were distinct aggravation followed by lasting amelioration so this prognosis may be more favorable now the clarity of the image of the remedy in that moment now this is related with the selection of the medicine and this clarity of the image of the remedy in that moment is related with the knowledge suppose a beginner a homeopath with so little experience like me may not find a specific medicine or may not find the similimum for a particular case but our seniors our teachers with vast knowledge can find the perfect similimum Dr. Vitolkas mentioned an uh, instance. It may happen that with the lack of knowledge of materia medica, it may happen that I haven't read the medicine which is needed right now. So, what your mind doesn't know, eyes cannot see. But an experienced homeopath who has read that particular remedy in Madhya Medica, he can easily identify the patient or easily identify the symptom. So it depends on knowledge. This clarity of the image depends on knowledge of the homeopathic point of view, the homeopath's knowledge. now in homeopathic point of view what haniman mentioned the incurable case is this inroads on human health affected by the allopathic non healing art more particularly in recent times are of all chronic diseases the most incurable the most incurable and i regret to add that it is apparently impossible to discover or hit upon any remedies for their cure when they have reached considerable height so turned by hanimans are incurable but our curability or incurability depends on the presentation that means the totality of symptoms or the symptoms presenting by the patient if we have uncommon peculiar striking symptoms and along with that those factors which are responsible for cures is in favor of us so the case is curable we are not talking that the, the pathology has the limit okay there is a limit where from it is irreversible but if we look through the spectacles of modern medicine 
then it will be little difficult for a homeopath. Homeopathic point of view of curability or incurability is different from the modern medicine point of view. Hmm. Now, a special some special words from a great homeopath. What is mentioned by Dr. George Hitolkas in Science of Homeopathy, Section 2, Chapter 17, truly hopeless cases are virtually non-existent. Now, a physician of his standard or knowledge can say this. So it only depends on the knowledge, dedication, and fidelity, which was mentioned by Hanuman. So the hopelessness is related with knowledge. A beginner homeopath like me with little knowledge may be hopeless that it is incurable we cannot help you but if we can refer the same case to our teachers our seniors we or she surely can help with the homeopathic medicines so all everything depends on knowledge lack of knowledge leads to hopelessness and with knowledge there will be some hope and the last point which was mentioned requisite for cure patient physician and medicine the physician must have the medicine of un unimpaired strength which was mentioned by Hanuman in aphorism 264 Let us go to the first again, the case number one. The case of venous ulcer, successfully treated with homeopathic medicine, was prescribed graphitis. On this symptomatology, crack in skin of the affected area, discharge, bloody fluid, which is sticky, chilly patient, nausea from eating sweet, and constipated. And the result is here, the outcome was favorable. Case number two, a case of rheumatoid arthritis, lady of 29 years, presented with Classical symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis. The patient was very much mild and gentle, breathes easily. She was thirstless, with dry tongue, chilly patient, and spicy wily food for the GI problem. She was prescribed with pulsicilla nigricans, followed by silicia, which is also the chronic medicine of pulsatilla and silicia was selected because there was a change of symptoms like sweat on palms and soles, offensiveness of sweat and after few doses of pulsatilla it was not improving further so silicia was prescribed. Now she is totally fine, works in the field and her serological changes are evident that homeopathy really helped her. Case number three, so again, although it is not completed yet, but it is almost uh, 
going towards the success. The patient was presented with classical symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis, anti-CCP 375.62. He was first prescribed with acid chlor, chloric acid. Why he was prescribed chloric acid? Even there was stiffness uh, in joints and difficulty to move. She works. She has mentally very. She was very ment mentally very energetic. And she wanted to work all his household works. She had a craving for green chilies, desire for meat, aversion to milk. She was hot, and also. Fear of action of acid floor in joints. So, acid floor was prescribed. Later on, silicia was followed by silicia because there were offensiveness of joints. Calicard. Why Calicard was prescribed? After few doses of Silesia, she was not improving further, and there were a peculiar modality. The pain was aggravating very much at 3 a.m. in the morning. The result is here, anti-CCP antibody reduced very much and her presenting complaints also were improved. Case number four, this case still under treatment, she was first prescribed with bacillinum, in between she had fever and was prescribed Rhinia later on Medorinum was prescribed and last two cases is under treatment <clears throat> conclusion we will conclude with a special word from a very successful physician who treated difficult and incurable cases especially. Dr. J. Ellis Barker in his book, My Testament of Healing, Chapter 3, How I Diagnose Cases, he told that even if the condition of a patient is absolutely hopeless, it is from my point of view a crime to give up and to tell him that nothing can be done. He mentioned my point of view. Again, it comes to the point of knowledge. A physician like J. Ellis Barker, Dr. R. T. Cooper, Dr. Barnett, Dr. Clark, they treated so much difficult and incurable cases, especially. So everything depends on knowledge. Homeopathy, not homeopathy, medicine is a science of experience. So if you have experience, the case is not hopeless. If you have no experience, the case is hopeless. Here, I was a little nervous first because my co-presenter uh, Professor Dr. Pradeep Bairi sir, he was the first presenter and I was a little nervous that uh, after <laughs> sir, my presentation, what I will present. 
and why I am telling this? This platform, in this platform, my uh, my presentation is for them, for my juniors who are uh, like beginners like me. This slides of these cases are for you. That homeopathy can definitely help in difficult and incurable cases, so-called incurable cases. And we should try to gather our knowledge or increase our knowledge from our seniors and our uh, respected teachers so that we can help in difficult and incurable cases. Thanks to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present my seminar and special thanks that a beginner, a so much junior homeopath like me, you have given me the chance and thanks to all and happy Diwali to all. Thank you. Madam, hello. Priya ma'am. So a very quick recapitulation of the whole organ of medicine and uh, uh, definitely you have focused on the very particular points uh, that uh, really uh, what to tell uh, make many difficult situations for the uh, for for most of most of the doctors not only for the beginners but for the seniors uh, for the uh, people who are now in our stage and uh, for all the doctors in every stage of life that uh, whenever any case is coming means uh, and whenever that is being stamped, that yes, this is one of the very toughest thing to cure, or this is the very incurable, so-called incurable cases. As we all know that, whenever there is a bit of peculiarity present, definitely think that the case is curable. So that peculiarity may be at the physical level, may be at the mental level, may be at the very emotional level, but that has to be searched for. Each and every factors has to be searched for in detail by the physician with a very full of patience, sympathy and empathy towards the patient. A patient, as we all know that patient means a suffering human being. So whenever someone is suffering out of any sorts of uh, uh, disorders, and he or she is coming to us with lots of hope. And if we will be just in a very hurry, hurry to see the case, uh, just uh, what to do, the doing the simple clerical jobs of yes, uh, what is the complaint, what is the desire, aversion, and intolerance, and the mental complaint. So definitely that is in no way going to 
address the issue. So as a doctor and particularly as a, as a very gentle, humble human being and a social worker. I will call uh, a, as a doctor. So we have to definitely deal each and every case. No case is actually incurable. What you tell now, the last quote, that yes, really this is a crime to give up and to tell the patient that nothing can be done. So this will, when the hope is die, means everything will die. So the, you have uh, described very fine cases of the venous leg ulcer and the, with uh, the proper photographs. Yes, clearly it showed that how the improvement uh, went on and ultimately the thing was cured with graphitis. So these, these cases, no, and the few more cases of rheumatoid arthritis with the very uh, simple prescription, anyone can tell that yes, pulsatile was very simple, but no one can, could ever thought of that uh, the extreme high level of anti-CCP antibody level that has come down and the symptoms has all gone and the patient was completely cured. So uh, pulsatile followed by silicia and the rest things are treated by fluoric acid and bacillinum. So all this, the prescription that you showed and the cases that you show, showed over here that are really what to tell require a lot of applause from all the viewers over here. So to add on, let me uh, share one of uh, few cases of mine. One case that uh, because I am particularly dealing in the gynecology department, so let me uh, just now I can recall a few cases from that area. One case, case you know, that I get uh, of secondary infertility a lady uh, of around 26 years old. So that secondary infertility, whenever she came, no, she had the history of ruptured ectopic three years before. So ruptured ectopic means one side tube and ovary that was completely out. And now she is, since last three years, she is now suffering from secondary infertility. So def definitely many of the patients, they very rarely come as fresh patient. Uh, so, so already they have uh, consulted many doctors and the ultimate outcome was found to be that the cause of secondary infertility was tubal blockage with PCOS. Means one tube already removed, only one tube left and that tube was fully blocked. And she had the menstrual irregularity and her USC report was telling that she had polycystic ovarian syndrome. And yes, there was also hyperprolactinemia. So this was the pathology. And ultimately, definitely, uh, she took the treatment of allopathy for three years, last three years, not, not actually three years, two and a half years. And that was ultimately ended in frustration and they landed to our hospital. So uh, this was a great pleasure for me to tell that only one single medicine and a very short period of four months of time only. And the medicine was only Ignacia. I think each and every newcomer can prescribe this. Only Ignacia and that cured the whole case and she conceived and ultimately that ended in a, the delivery of a full term baby boy. So what is my intention to share this case is that this case is no doubt each and everyone will accept that this is uh, one of the very toughest thing to treat. One of the very difficult case to be treated. But this difficult, so-called difficult case by the others is not at all a difficult case for us. We can deal and one more case very recently, just one week before I got the news of pregnancy positive. That was the case of a bipolar disorder. A lady with bipolar disorder, along with that, she also had PCOS and she was suffering from infertility 
the medicine that was prescribed was staphylococcus and just last week i got the news of that she is now pregnant for 2 months so definitely there is no loss of hope there is no absolutely difficult or incurable cases each and every case with the proper knowledge of organ and of medicine and definitely the medicine quality should be okay uh, what dr satyaji told the patient physician and the medicine yes this triangle should be properly maintained then there is nothing so called absolutely incurable or difficult case we can deal each and every case with our utmost sincerity and if it's a failure then definitely it's a failure of mine not the pathy so with uh, this words i am again thanking to both uh, our uh, uh, learned speakers in today's evening and uh, now i am requesting dr kalyan sir to please share his views and move towards the conclusion <clears throat> good evening uh, thank you ompriya for your such a nice moderation and uh, uh, kalani sir uh, we have to uh, make some announcement for the uh, alumni meet and we have uh, ompriya ma'am we have one question from mr pradeep uh, dr pradeep majundar so uh, the question is there on the screen uh before we proceed father uh, can you ask the question or i'll just uh, give you the question it's from probir majundar uh, what are the difficulties using rubrics between old and modern days repertories this is the first question and the second question is what are the modes of homeopathic treatment for schedule j disease of drugs and cosmetics acts and rules 1945 Uh, I think this question, uh, Ompriya Ma'am, is for uh, Professor Pradeep Bairi. Yes, yes. This is most probably for Dr. Bairi. So, if Dr. Bairi is here, then I will request, uh, sir, please to answer, or we will send sir the. Here. Sir is okay, here. Okay, sir. Is here. Okay, sir, please. <coughs> Actually, regarding the first question. what are the difficulties using rubrics between old and the modern days repertories i think repertory we are using repertories why we are using repertory if there is a clear cut indication of a case the medicine there is no need to use repertories so there are some difficult cases where we cannot able to reach the different medicine which to be prescribed then we want cons uh, consult our repertories now i don't know uh, the up to which era or the which year we mention it is the old and after which we mention it is modern if you go through the kent repertory <coughs> it was actually since 1897 uh, it was the hard work of dr kent and prior to him dr gentry and dr shivinar also prepared their repertories which are the puritan type of the repertories and after that the repertories which developed over the kentian repertories namely synthetic repertory the final general repertory the kunjli's repertory and also synthesis repertory and complete repertory actually they are the uh, on the same philosophy that is the kentian philosophy but after that some of the repertory is developed which are not depending on the kentian uh, philosophy as per our knowledge concerned we uh, very nicely and also very logically use kent's repertory as because the philosophy is so enriched and the so uh, acceptable throughout the homeopathy parlance that we use it so uh, the repertory is which are developed or kentian repertory they are the addition of the rubrics and the addition of the medicines <clears throat> and also the reason behind the addition of the rubrics and the medicine also mentioned in different uh, repertories by different authors i think 
so called modern repertories as you uh, perhaps you like to mention that about the uh, marfis repertory or like this if you go there you notice that there are some uh, pathological condition to be considered but you know that homeopathy believes on the dynamic concept of the disease not being the pathological end result of the disease which is the motto for the homeopathic prescription and the philosophy of dr kent uh, till today uh, i believe the repertory of kent and the kent, the repertory, repertory develops over dr kent repertory uh, we use it but uh, in some incurable cases somebody try to uh, depends on the modern repertory that is uh, individuals response and individual fascination as dr uh, shottu is not uh, prior to that i will uh, congratulate shottu ji uh, uh, you uh, aware about that your co speaker myself but no it is uh, not uh, as a senior you are also uh, to uh, to learned regarding your subject dr uh, shottu ji uh, told about uh, the difficult case difficulties in the curing the cases <clears throat> so one can can try that the difficulties in the knowledge if i have difficulty in using the uh, the uh, organolem medicine and the laws and principle of homeopathy that is the the foundation of homeopathy we are we are cheaply and the solely depending upon the laws and principle whenever we are in the laws and the principle and we are using the accepted philosophy definitely we use the repertories which are believing and the which are depending on that philosophy and the laws and principle otherwise <clears throat> otherwise if we uh, say that this disease is incurable that's why i am taking the pathological symptoms for my uh, repertorization there are some uh, lacking in the knowledge to whom i say that it is the pathological and there is no symptoms that is my lacking it is my uh, disability to collect the symptoms from my patient uh, that is the most important thing as dr haniman also mentioned that one sided disease is uh, uh, firstly due to the lack of the ability to collect the symptoms from the patient uh, from the patient and also to some extent the patient itself uh, due to the uh, utmost care we cannot able to collect the symptoms from my our patient so uh, so far my knowledge concerns still today if you considered that the kentian repertory and the repertory which developed over the kentian repertory are the oldest repertory still i believe that the oldest repertory are the gold one and the gem one and still today everybody every homeopathic physician must depend on the as because it was tested it was tested it was tested and the tested for uh, centuries and uh, that is the most uh, the perhaps you can able to uh, uh, understand my uh, first uh, your first uh, question and regarding the second question that is the question of law that is the question of law that is the uh, as you mentioned that it is the Uh, cosmetic uh, act whatever the question was what are the modes of the homeopathic treatment for the uh, a uh, actually scheduled a j drugs that is the 1945 indian uh, the list of the diseases and elements which a drug may not claim to prevent or cure <clears throat> we also we always believe the indian laws we are not treating uh, such diseases all the diseases in the j scheduled drugs we cannot claim but there are so many cases which can we can cure if you say that we can cure angina pectoris yes some of our friends can cure the acute appendicitis cases even the chronic appendicitis cases baldness it is also under j drugs but we can cure the baldness definitely we can cure but uh, we cannot claim that this medicine can prevent it this medicine so this is uh, the law uh, I, i i am very much poor about the uh, about the uh, about this law uh, in in knowledge so uh, i i cannot able to uh, comment about it uh, the cancer and the benign tumors uh, uh, perhaps uh, most of us can able to cure uh, benign tumors like the lipoma like this but yes to demand that i can able to cure cancer case all of you know that from the miasmatic uh, concept that that is the cancer that is the neoplasia what is neoplasia abnormal irreversible proliferation of the cell or the tissues which continue to proliferate after the inciting stimulus is withdrawn and thereby that is the pathological uh, point of view 
and if you go through the miasmatic concept that the cancer it is the tri miasmatic so complex uh, if the homeopathic anti miasmatic treatment can separate them makes the make simple from the complexity we can cure but it is very very difficult as our stalwart mentioned that we can uh, lengthen in the life of our patient but for the claiming that we can able to cure the cancer uh, i have uh, till today no, no such experience at all so uh, regarding this uh, scheduled jdx i am very i have very poor knowledge i am not uh, uh, acquainted about the facts but the so called dynamic curable disease we can cure the homeop- with the help of the homeopathic medicine the curable disease dynamic disease dynamic uh, disease <clears throat> but in cases of the uh, purely incurable cases having the gross pathological changes which is the, having the irreversible pathology uh yes along with the dr elis barker's comments that uh, we are not hopeless but we are trying to solve the problem at least we cannot able to cure but we can uh, able to in lengthening the life less suffering of the patient that's much i think um, uh, i cannot be able to uh, answer much more about this if you are not satisfied i have nothing to do as because i am confessing that i am very much poor about this but regarding the use of the uh, rubric between the old and the modern this uh, preparatory uh, what i have experience i i already mentioned it but regarding jdax this must do okay thank you thank you so much sir thank you so much sir for uh, such a lovely presentation and uh, kalyani sir it's uh, kalyani sir it's over to you for the alumni meet uh, announcement as well as uh, your remarks thank you vidut first of all i should pay our heartiest thanks and regard to our brilliant speakers on the screen first to our inaugurator professor ajay kumar choudhury for coming with us to encourage us our cme he is a very very cheerful person always encourages us always he will tell i am not a homeopath i don't do anything but you do not know he is having a good amount of knowledge in homeopathy he is a very specific critical person regarding science we are really thankful to him for his arrival and encouraging us and we are we should say really many thanks to ompriya he is with us all along encouraging participating assisting motivating all along so regarding ompriya ma'am i like to tell you all of you that he is such a ma'am that he never thinks a single case incurable or beyond our reach he will try and try and try and he has shown many successes in in ipd and ipd we really thankful to him also and for his brilliant moderation too next our brilliant speakers uh, dr bairi he is a very well known person one of the great pillars of repertory in bengal it is expected that his presentation will be beautiful and it happened so very critical analysis Uh, we are really thankful uh, i request dr bairi to come forward with your experiences much more to encourage all of us please because i know you as a very brilliant scholar of nasrist homeopathy and next is dr uh, sotojit noshkar always he was telling that i am junior see indian should not tell like this there was a junior name swami vivekananda he startled the whole world being the most junior in chicago world religion stage so junior does not mean has less knowledge less experiences many times we find that juniors are much learned much confident than many seniors so be cheer up you have collected few cases means you have given a way a road to deal with incurable cases 
with a very specific homeopathic manner. Thanks to all the viewers, those who will view later on, all the participants who have worked for the CME, successful CME. Little things I want to add, what I have learned from my teachers, I just want to share you, that might help you, that regarding mental symptom, in the you know, good introductory class, when I took admission in Calcutta Homeopathy Medical College, first, first year, freshers will come. Dr. B.K. Bose, who was founder of Calcutta Homeopathy College, came to give us a welcome address. In his address, he told that you 50 students have taken admission in this class. But you five among the 50 becomes real homeopath. Our endeavor, our effort for whole life will be successful. Why? Because, brothers, to become good homeopaths, primarily you have to be a philosopher. What does it mean? That you must develop vision. In philosopher, in Bengal, it is called as darshan. You must learn to visualize, to see. Mental symptoms are such a symptom, starting from the entrance of the patient till when he is leaving the cubic chamber, all along we are observing, observing, observing to bring out mental symptoms because we have learned that mental symptoms are very, very the most important general symptoms. Among them, those who are uncommon mental symptoms are very, very, very important. They should be given first emphasis to your whatever may be the case. In that regard, this abandoned cast off is such a point such a symptom we learn from our teachers that if a patient goes to emergency department in any state hospital or wherever first doctors concentrate on heart is it normal because if it stops for three minutes the heart will never beat anymore so most emergencies cardiac complications likewise when you are collecting mental symptom the most emergency mental symptoms are this abandoned word if a patient is feels that he's cast off, whatever may be the reason, be very, very serious. Because if this cast off or abandoned symptom is truly mental uncommon, means patient is coming from an elite family with all sort of available means, there is no lacking of any social means, still see or he is feeling I am cast off, developing suicidal tendency. It is very, very uncommon mental symptom, the most emergency, because if you cannot arrest this mental symptom as quick as possible, patient might go for suicide. You may lose the patient. If the patient comes from a downwards family, multi-para mothers or disturbed pressed fathers or harassed patients, with different type of troubles in the society, financially, economically, politically, for his or her cost of or abundant symptom, maybe only mental symptom, may not be that much important to that of who is coming from an elite, well-to-do family with golden spoon in their lips. So brothers and sisters, if you find this symptom, be very, very serious, give maximum emphasis, Try to clarify, is it really uncommon? Then that only one mental, very uncommon symptom which is leading the patient to destroy his own life may be the only guideline for the selection of medicine if other symptoms are not very much striking. Such type of important symptom is abundant. And Dr. Bairi has very, very nicely explained, clarified how to collect what is the value, what exactly the thing is. One more thing I want to add regarding Dr. Noskor's presentation. See, curability and incurability. Madam Umpria Mishra also told, supported very nicely. Regarding curability, incurability, homeopath should not depend on the pathological findings only or the diagnosis only. Because we have a separate tested, as Dr. Bairi was telling, tested by hundreds, more than hundreds of hundred years, we have a parameter 
we have a specific machinery which can tell whether the case is curable or incurable. That is 12 observation of Ken and a Herring's law of cure. So whenever a patient will ask, doctor, may I be cured? Can you cure me? Our reply should be, as I told before, our reply should be, yes, I will tell you after a few little time. After first prescription or second prescription, I will be able to tell you whether it is curable, incurable or what the prognosis exactly is to an homeopath. Because we must select the medicine homeopathically, we give it in required potency, then we will observe and observe and observe the movement of improvements. Then only we are able to tell whether it is curable or incurable. All of you know that majority of our systems, <coughs> starting from heart, blood, kidney, liver, hormones, almost all the organs and systems, only 25% of their activities are exercised regularly. 75% are restored for emergency. Many times when you see a case as fatal, that 25% might have been exhausted, which are in active state, regular active state. But 75% was in store. Among 75%, if few more percentages are damaged permanently, still there is hope. As I can give you an example, <laughs> among five liters of average quantity blood, if somebody takes out two and a half liters and immediately fluid is balanced, the patient may survive because only one fourth of the total amount of five liters is calculated and they are utilized regularly. Kidney, if one complete kidney is lost, completely damaged, <laughs> another half another half of another kidney is damaged. Only one fourth of the both kidney are still alive. There is hope because under restriction, the patient may have normal life because physiology says one fourth capacity of the kidney can maintain a life. So regarding curability, incurability, difficulty, everything we will express, will report to the patient after a long, after a short period of our endeavor or trial. As you know, rheumatoid arthritis is not an easy disease. It is said to be incurable. It is curing. There are many other diseases. As Madam told, give you a few examples of infertility. So homeopathy is surviving in the world till death in, stripe, in spite of thousands of constraints, in spite of thousands of struggles and tortures simply because only one reason homeopathy can cure so-called incurable cases from the date of Hanuman till death so we will be alive we will live homeopathy will definitely flourish if not to the expected range but it will go on progressing because we are quite competent to cure so-called incurable cost of cases of the whole medical world so thank you very much again for coming with us, encouraging. And we must request to all of you to extend this information regarding CME for participation. Ask your friends to prepare the subjects and come forward to extend their experiences, to improve our knowledges, to enrich this CME. This CME has already reached international level. We should not bring down its standard. We'll try our level best. We'll continuously try to make gradually better and better CME. Regarding the announcement, Dr. Vidud Mukherjee was telling, all of you know that there is one reunion. It has been arranged in Salt Lake on 9th of December. There will simply meet, not for a particular purpose, simply to encourage us. We'll see, as we are seeing through screens, We'll see face to face, we'll talk face to face. After a long period, after a long struggle of COVID, we like to meet each other to cheer up in our profession. So please try to join all of you among you, along with your friends and family members. Thank you very much. Many, many thanks. Vidut, please. Sir, and uh, 
we will be having will be meeting physically on 9th of december at salt lake uh, for our grand alumni meet and our next cme will be on uh, 13th of november as sir had requested we are inviting all our alumnus across the globe be a speaker come with your topic uh, please uh, you can write in the uh, our email address or you can send uh, whatsapp to ompriya ma'am dr kalyani sir dr chandrashekhar pore or to me and we will be connecting we'll be getting in touch with you also and we thanks each and every participants of tonight's cme and uh, with this with permission of kalyani sir we are returning you back to our backstage editor good night Good night. Good night and thank you all. Good night, Good night. sir. Good night, all, please.